Good morning, guys. I want to share my thoughts on architecture, IT architecture. My, my friend who's a real architect who, who designed buildings, he's, he's completely jaded with his industry. You know, on LinkedIn, he keeps on getting IT stuff pitched at him. Poor him. But in the information age, IT architecture, what does it mean? Like, you know me, I'm like a suckless kind of guy. When I approached the topic of being an architect or architecture, I was kind of thinking like, we're going to make this suck less, we're going to remove the bloat. But as I become more experienced, I'm pretty sure I know what architecture is now. It's about documentation. So one thing that irritates the hell out of me is that when I consult with clients, you know, they typically have a SharePoint. Typically search is broken because a lot of their like documents perhaps are, are scanned, especially in Asia where it's typical that, that you get these, um, especially in big enterprises that they have this sort of like stamp, they have this like stamping process. So what they do is that they have an architecture document uh, or tender or something, and they stamp it and then they scan it. So that completely breaks, um, you know, the indexing of that document typically. And it makes the documents really hard to read and their, and their various different systems hard to fathom. So let me just start by saying that like when it comes to documentation, I'm like a readme.md person. But let me just walk you through a couple of approaches which I think are quite cool. Like, for example, Gov UK use and many other, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a promoted way of doing using these things called architecture decision records. It's kind of like a readme.md format, but with a little bit more structure. Like you, you say, um, you give basically, what's the format here? It's an Alexandra pattern. You give the context, the problem and the solution. Okay, context, problem, solution. But fundamentally for me, you need to record these decisions because they're, they're time sensitive. Like, like date is the most important attribute for me. You know, like when you made that decision, it was a compromise. So, so that decision might have been right at that time, but it might not be right some sometime down the road, right? So this is why it's important to document it. And time for me is the most important. So, so typically, like you know, the person who came up with ADRs would, I don't know, recommends that so they sort of sequential number do or something like this. For me, I would probably prefer them just to have like, you know, 2021, 04, 06 or something like that. Like have the date, and of course the date is sequential. And another thing about ADRs, I mean, I like them and all, but a lot of the time they're sort of buried in this like weird, you know, structure in some GitHub or something like that. For me, documentation needs to be very sur surfaced. Like it should be on the blog, should be easy to link to, should be, you know, ideally uh, indexed by Google, of course. But I mean, if on a private enterprise, these things won't be. But like, it's got to be easy to find and easy and so and really simple to link to. And unfortunately, um, the gov that UK ones, like for example, the ones here, they have another developer site which I'm I'm just exploring and I'm really enjoying. But some things just don't match up. But but kudos to gov.uk for, for for putting their stuff publicly, uh, which I'm which I'm amazed by. But still, not quite the way I would like to do it. So I talked about the you know I like readme.mds, but like I, I suggest you also draw uh, you know inspiration from RFCs, kind of a similar sort of thing, maybe a little bit more verbose. Another thing I should give a shout out to is that um, you know sometimes. People working with read, uh, markdown, checked in ticket, it's not feasible, you know, and especially in some enterprises, you know, the, the way that people work are, is a bit different. So they need a little bit more structure or whatever the term is. And tools like Enterprise Architect from, I don't know, Spark Systems, it's a couple of hundred dollars, but it's a horrible Java application, what have you. But these are great ways of modeling business processes. So when I come in, when I <laughs> come to a client and I want to understand their process, 
the, this can describe it really well. Much, almost better, you know, sometimes it is nice to see a little bit of a diagram. And, and tools like this make it really easy. Like, I don't know how you would, I, I very rarely see diagrams in ADRs for some reason. But okay, maybe, maybe these are not related, but for me, I like to see a little bit of diagram. I like, I like pictures, what can I say? <laughs> so these tools work really well for bigger enterprises. And just to summarize here, if you're an IT ar architect, in my opinion, you should be prioritizing documentation. You should be documenting your decisions so that the implementers can best understand them. Thanks guys, please like the video. What, what, what does IT architecture mean to you? Comments below. This Docker shirt, it's, I'm, I'm wearing it ironically, okay? <laughs>